Good day and welcome to the video series Analysis of Airline and Airport Routes, Schedules and Operations. This video is part one, an introduction to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics of Aviation Data and specifically downloading BTS data for the Airline on Time Performance data set. My name is Lance Sherry and I will be your tour guide for this presentation. The objective of this short video is to provide an introduction to the BTS website, provide a very cursory overview of the amazing uh, BTS website, specifically look at the content of airline data, and then the bulk of the presentation is how to download airline on-time performance data set and the definitions of each of the fields. With this data set, you will be able to uh, do analysis of airline schedules, airline routes, and airline uh, on-time performance, as well as looking at uh, the same uh, um, information for airports, uh, routes, schedules, and on-time performance. With that, let's get started with the introduction to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics website. This is an amazing website with incredible quantity and quality of information. It's continuously changing. So um, as we go through this, I'm hesitant to provide links for specific data sets because those links change over time. But suffice to say, um, there is data in this website uh, ranging all modes of transportation from e-scooters to bike share to trucking to marine and of course the topic of this presentation is aviation. Um, if, you, if you go to the BTS uh, homepage and you click on topics and geography as shown by this um, uh, orange arrow, you will be taken um, to um, this menu item list and as you can see on this menu item list, there's a kind of a range of types of information that's available. Um, if you click on the topics, airline, airports, and aviation, uh, it will take you to this page that has a lot of high level information about the US airline industry, including um, uh, scheduled service, traffic statistics, and financial carriers. Uh, fin uh, carrier financial statistics. Those three data sets are known as the blue, green, and yellow books, and they provide a high-level summary of all the information. As you can see, there's also information on the, the performance, um, on-time performance, uh, DB1B financial data, <clears throat> um, information about the aircraft size and the capacity of the aircraft uh, that's used for operations, and then in data bank 21 and 22, the form 41 data that has um, financial data of airline costs and productivity. So you would ask, why does the government have so much information about the inner workings of the airline industry, um, which doesn't exist for other types of industries? And a very brief history behind that is that um, prior to 1978, the airline industry in the United States was regulated. What that meant is that the government agency known as the Civil Aviation Board, the CAB, determined who got to fly where and how much money they charged. So the, the CAB uh, defined uh, the, the route structure and the origin destination service and the costs to the consumer of all of the airline operations. And in order to do that, they needed to get statistics. They needed financial data, they needed operational data. And so starting in that period when the airline industry was regulated, the airlines were obligated to submit monthly, quarterly, and annual reports that would provide the CAB with information to determine if a new origin destination uh, needed service and how much to charge and what kind of frequency and so on. So even though the airline industry is no longer regulated, it's, we're, it's uh, the phrase that's used is the airline industry is now deregulated, uh, these requirements to provide the data are still in place and all of that data is collected at the Bureau of Transportation Statistics database. So to, to talk um, about the aviation data, 
Um, that information is available on a subset of the BTS database called Transstats. And this is the, the current link, although if this link doesn't get you there, you should um, do, do a Google search and you'll, you'll get to this page. This, this page in Transstats shows the aviation data. And as you can see um, in the orange box, uh, starting at the top, there's Air Carrier Financial Reports, Air Carrier Statistics. Um, the third item is Air Carrier Statistics uh, for all carriers, including international carriers. Um, Air Carrier Summary Data, um, which is a lot of the financial and operational data. And then the second from the bottom is the airline on-time performance data, and that's the data we're going to look at in this video. And then just to point out in the very bottom is the airline origin and destination survey data, which has a 10% sample of all the tickets that are issued for U.S. domestic operations. So as we go forward, we're going to be looking specifically at the airline on-time performance data set, AOTP. So to get the um, AOTP data, um, you will simply click on that link that's labeled airline on-time performance data that's shown in the orange circle. And then once you get to that page, there are two options. There's the marketing carrier on time performance and the reporting carrier on time performance. So that reflects the uh, operations or the way the industry is structured in that um, it is possible for one airline to sell a ticket on another airline. So the, the, the airline or the carrier that sells a ticket is known as the marketing carrier and uh, the information is reported under the mar marketing carrier's name. Alternatively, the, um, the, a the airline that actually carries the passenger is known as the carrier on time performance data. And this, this data set reflects the actual um, owner and operator of, of the individual flights. One example of the difference between marketing carrier and operating carrier is that um, several airlines um, um, have contracts with regional carriers and those regional carriers are names that you may have heard of but you don't know them as selling tickets uh, SkyWest, uh, Mesa, American Eagle and so on and so those regional carriers um, would be listed individually uniquely under the reporting carrier on time performance whereas those carriers performance statistics would be aggregated would be included in the marketing carrier uh, that actually sold sold the tickets so we're going to look at the operating carrier or the reporting carrier and when you go to that page you have to select a series of um, uh, choices to make a, a decision of what data sets you want before we go through the individual data sets, one option is to click on this pre-zipped file that's shown in the middle of the page, and that way you get the whole data set. Um, you can certainly do that. Um, it's a large data set, but in order to have a more manageable data set, uh, we recommend that you look at the following parameters. So the, the parameters are divided into sections, and the first section is time period. And what we would recommend is to get year, month, day of week and flight date. So you'll get those as different fields in the data set. The next data set is the airline data set. And um, there is a different sets of nomenclature that are used to identify individual airlines. Um, you know, for the kinds of analysis we we're doing, it would be sufficient to get the first one, the reporting uh, airline, which is a unique carrier code. Two other things are important is the tail number and the flight carrier number, uh, the flight number. The tail number is a unique identifier of individual aircraft. So the same way as your car has a vehicle identification number, VIN, each aircraft has a tail number, an N number, that identif identifies that aircraft uniquely. And then for the purpose of managing and um, keeping track and scheduling, airlines assign flight numbers to each of their individual flights. So any flight will, will have a reporting airline, it'll have a unique tail number, 
and it will have a flight number. So now we're going to get into the schedule. And uh, again, there are lots of different ways of capturing the origin and destination. For our purposes and to keep things simple, we just recommend you select the origin and the destination that lists the origin and destination airports. Now we get into the operational data. So starting with the departure, there is the CRS departure time. CRS stands for Computer Reservation System. And this is the um, standard sort of backbone in the airline industry where all of the information about the schedules are stored. So CRS, uh, um, reserv um, Carrier Reservation System, is, um, is the, the schedule time. So that's the scheduled departure time. The next item down, the second item, is the actual departure time. And then the third item, departure delay, is the difference between the scheduled, the CRS departure time, and the actual departure time. Um, the, the fourth item down, DEPDEL 15, departure delay indicator 15, this is a statistic that's used by the airline industry to report delays. Um, in, this, in, in essence, the industry recognizes that it'd be very difficult for aircraft to leave on time every time because of the complexity and the stochastic nature of weather and air traffic control and air traffic and congestion. So, um, so there's a 15 minute leeway and that's what's captured in the departure delay indicator. Um, the, uh, the, the third item from the bottom, the second item and the last item from the bottom are all to do with the um, operations on the, the ground at the airport, getting from the gate to the departure runway. The CRS departure block time is the time at which the aircraft is scheduled to uh, push back from the gate. And then there is taxi out time and wheels off time. The next batch of data is the arrival performance data. And the, this has the wheels on time when the aircraft lands, the taxi in time, how long it takes to taxi in, and then the CRS arrival time, that's the scheduled time at which the aircraft is expected to arrive at the gate. The fourth item down is the arrival time, the actual arrival time. And then you have the arrival delay and the arrival delay with a 15 minute buffer. The section on the bottom is cancellations and diversions, and that's an indication of whether the flight was cancellation was canceled. If the flight was canceled, it will have a cancellation code that will specify the reason for the cancellation. And then lastly, there's an indication of whether the flight was diverted. So a diverted flight is the case where the aircraft is airborne en route to the destination airport. Something occurs at the airport or in air traffic or on the aircraft and the aircraft has to land at a different airport. Um, and so that's known as an alternate airport or a diversion airport. And uh, so that um, indicator is whether the flight in fact uh, diverted. The next set of data is to do with flight summaries. And this is kind of the airborne portion of the flight. Um, the CRS elapsed time is the computer reservation system elapsed time of the flight. Um, and that's how long it takes from the moment that the wheels leave the ground to the wheels touch down. So that's the, um, the scheduled airborne time or the scheduled air time. The second item is the actual elapsed time. And then the air time is the time in, in minutes. The last item is the distance between the airports and that's in, in miles. So normally in aviation, we work in nautical miles, but this, this distance is, in, is listed in miles. And then last item is kind of interesting for uh, performance delay analysis, for looking at the causes of delay. And um, what's identified there is the amount of time in minutes that the carrier takes responsibility for the delay, the delay as a function of weather, the delay caused by the National Airspace System, the NAS, um, a delay caused by security, or a delay caused by the aircraft arriving at the airport late, such that it couldn't turn around quickly enough to leave on time. And so those are the causes of delay. So in order to, to download 
this data once you've selected the items. Um, what you have to do is scroll to the top of, of the page and in the top of the page there are three selections that have to be made by pull-down menus. Um, so the first is to filter by geography and so to keep the data set um, manageable many times it makes sense to select the state in which you're analyzing um, uh, um, operations data for a given airport. So if you were oper if you were analyzing data for Richmond Airport, you might select uh, Virginia because Richmond um, is located physically in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And then you'll identify the year. In this case, we want to look at 2020. And then you'll identify the period, which is the month of the year. In this case, we want to select January. So um, you're going to select the geography, the year, and the period uh, defined by the month. Once you've made those three selections, you can go ahead and click on the download button. And uh, once you do the download button, um, it kind of chugs away. You have to be a little bit patient. Um, but eventually, the BTS system will send you a, a file, a zip file, um, that has this somewhat ambiguous uh, name. I'm sure there's uh, some logic to it. Um, so you can see that on the bottom left of the slide where the, the zip file is available. And then once you open up the zip file, you, can, you should definitely save it as, a, um, as an XLS file if you're going to work in, in uh, Excel spreadsheet, as we're going to show in the upcoming videos. Uh, but alternatively, um, you could you save it, and it, it comes in the form of a comma-separated CSV file. So this is the um, the what the file looks like when you open it up in the spreadsheet. Um, so you can see on the the bottom left, um, it's got that name, uh, the nomenclature that comes from the BTS website. And then across the top are all of those parameters that you had selected, starting with year, month, day, flight date, uh, marketing carrier, and um, marketing carrier flight number, and so on. So all of the data is in the columns. And then um, the, the information for individual flights is in the rows. So what we've covered in this uh, video is um, an introduction to the BTS website, very high level, because it's a very um, amazing website with incredible content and incredible amount of information. Uh, we looked at the, provided a very quick overview of the content of the website, and then focused in on the content of airline data, and then specifically went through instructions on how to download airline on-time performance data, AOTP, and describe the definitions of fields in the AOTP. The next video in this series is analysis of airport scheduled operations. So look forward to seeing you there.